I paid £900 for 15 PlayStation 5 motherboards off eBay and they were sold to me as scrap boards. So I sold them, I bought them as scrap boards with no daughter boards for the disk drive, which means that no matter what, I can't use these boards to actually make consoles. But that being said, I'm going to try and fix them anyway. Why? Because I want to. Because I want to. And because it's fun. And to be honest, it's all a learning curve. We're all learning every single day. And what better way to do it than on scrap boards, right? So, yes, these were expensive. But I will make a lot of money back on these. Because I do have an online store where I sell parts and supplies. And most of these things, such as the Wi-Fi chip, the safe bridge, the SSD controller, the HDMI encoders, all of that stuff, I can resell and that allows other consoles to be fixed. The main point of these was to get some stock from my store because I'm running low, but I'm just, I just thought to myself, you know what, why not actually try and learn something from them at the same time? Because that's exactly how I learned. I learned by practicing on scrap boards. And yes, I didn't pay, you know, stupid amounts of money like I have now, but yeah, this is an investment to me, so I don't see it as a stupid, you know, stupid amount of money. It's an investment for my business, um, but why not have some fun in the process? And um, maybe we can learn a few things. I worked on board one literally half an hour ago. I've just finished filming that video. Um, I'm not going to spoil that result, so I highly recommend checking that one out first. You'll get a little bit more context and stuff as well. I'm going to put all of these into a playlist as well, so as basically. Yeah, we can, uh, you can watch them in order if you want, and I'll number each of them as well. So, I'm going to work on the next one in the list, or rather the next one on the pile. I'm not going to cherry pick them. Literally just going to grab, grab the board right off the top of the pile and just get cracking. So, with that being said, if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. If you do want to organise a repair, you can check me out at consolefix.co.uk. You can book in a repair and you can get in touch if you've got any questions as well. And like I said, I do run an online store and you can check me out at consolefix.shop where you can buy parts, tools and supplies. So with that being said, let's get into this next repair. Right, so next one on the pile, like I said. I'm not cherry picking them. I don't care which board it is. I'm just doing them in order. And this is how they came out of the box. So this is how I'm working on them. Hopefully, I can get some fix. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil the result of the last one. So you'll have to watch that if you want to find out if I actually repaired it or not. Not going to give any information out. Because then it's kind of pointless me recording all the videos. This video probably still would have been here without today's sponsor. But hey, it's time to show something, right? So here goes. Here at The Code of Productions, we love nothing more than to take as much money from you, the viewer, as we possibly can which is why we're proud to talk to you about consolefix.shop, a great place for you to spend your hard-earned cash. I mean, yeah, fair enough. You get parts and supplies that help you fix things, but you've got to give me some money in return. Nothing in life's free, and if you pay me for it, you might appreciate it more. Or not. Hey, I'm not judging. With that being said, we do have some pretty cool stuff on the shelves, including power supplies, HDMI ports, charging chips, MOSFETs, and whatever else you can think of that will give you the illusion that you're getting a good deal. So head on over to the online store by clicking on the link in the video description. And if there's one thing I can guarantee, is that there will be a way for me to take your money. Console Fix, your friendly money grabbing YouTuber. Like the last one, I don't have a clue what's wrong with this. It's been sold to me as I try and shuffle up to my desk. It's been sold to me as a scrap board. So it's been sold with no daughter board. So let me show you what I mean by a daughter board. So I bought a PS5 board off a friend of mine today. Uh, it's an issue which I've never come across before. It's a very weird issue. And essentially what's happening with this one here is that it will stay on for three minutes or something like that. And while it's on, it will make some weird noise. Sort of like coil wine, but not quite. And then exactly 15 seconds after the coil wind uh, stops, it basically just dies, right? It just completely dies. And it's exactly 15 seconds every time. And I can't figure it out. So I said to, said to my friend, I said, I'll buy it off you for a donor board. I'll give you basically what I paid for the pile that I've got here. And he was happy with that. So, yeah. So this is a daughter board. This belongs inside the disk drive. And this board here 
there's a chip on the board just here. This is called a Renaissance chip. And basically, well, it's actually, uh, it's not Renaissance anymore, but I think it's still Renaissance that make them. But this is paired to the APU. So without that, you can't use a disk drive. And if you can't use a disk drive, then you also can't update the console, which means that the boards that I've bought are absolutely useless. I can't use them. They're not digital boards, they are disk edition boards. And I know that because it's got the disk edition connector on there. And yeah, Sony wanted to save 10 cents, so they took the connector off for the digital ones. But yeah, these are essentially useless. They, I can't do anything with them unless they're an exploitable board. And then, you know, I could sell it as an exploitable board because you can use it. But uh, yeah, kind of beside the point. But anyway, can't do anything with the boards. I'm just fixing them for the fun of it. So... Don't know what's wrong with this. I think I'm going to go over the board. I know there's some liquid metal spillage. Um, I think that happened during transit because it really wasn't packaged very well. I'm not going to name the seller because I don't want to cause crap. But yeah, the seller that I'm dealing with in terms of these boards, he or she doesn't know much about boards, to be honest. I'm going to be honest. They don't know much. And they are saying that these are unfixable and I've had quite a few in the past which I've been able to fix. So I don't believe them. So yeah, I'm going to go over these boards, I'll pop under the microscope, I'll scan through this and we'll see what's going on with it in terms of the liquid metal and what components are missing. I can see the HDMI encoder on this one is missing, so yeah. Alright, fine. So let's just go over this board then, so let's just give it a quick visual inspection. You may notice I've got a lot more light now on my microscope camera. The reason for that is purely because I've overclocked my ring light. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not happy at the minute. That's why you can hear a fan whirring off my bench power supply. But, yeah, never mind. Uh, so, yeah, this is... I mean, it seems fairly clean. We are missing the HDMI encoder on this one. I think most of these boards are going to have something missing. But... Yeah, the board in terms of, you know, what kind of work has been done to it, there's really not a lot been done by the look of it. Um, you know, I'm, I've had a quick look over this top board just before I started the video, you know, just a visual inspection without the microscope, and I couldn't see much other than the fact that the HDMI encoder was missing. But I haven't cherry-picked these, they're just literally how they come out of the box. I don't really care which one I work on for which video, it doesn't make a difference to me. But, uh, yeah, this one seems to be fairly clean as well. The last one was, uh, without spoiling too much, it was covered in flux in certain areas. Uh, it's gonna get away. That's going to go out of focus a little bit. Let's see if I can get that in focus for you. There we go. So the board's slightly raised when it's turned over this side. So we do have some liquid metal on this around by the uh, tantalum caps. So I'll collect that up in a minute. Some more liquid metal there. But other than that, it looks in fairly good condition. We, like I said, we do need to replace that HDMI encoder before we can power it on. It won't power on without that. But let's clean up the liquid metal first before we do anything. So I'll just use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a cotton swab to clean up the liquid metal. So I'm going to group this up. I've got some more up here, so I'll group it all up together and then I'll collect it all properly. There we go, beautiful. Perfect, okay. So, now I can collect that up and because it's got a little bit of, whoops, you can't even see, sorry guys and girls. Uh, because it's got a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it, it'll just bundle up, look, like that. I can collect it up like that then, and then because I am a complete and utter cheapskate, I'll drop that right on the APU. I'm a cheapskate, I can't help it. Money grabbing YouTuber, that's me. Alright, so, we've got the HDMI encoder area here. So like I said, this is going to need replacing before I do anything, so I'm going to grab a chip off a, well, out my donor pile. I've got a few chips already taken off boards. I'm just going to drop a new chip on here. This is the MN864739. Of course you can buy these on my online store. Of course you can. It'd be silly not to sell them, wouldn't it? 
I've got my hot air at 440 degrees Celsius, 40% airflow. No, you need to live on this PS5 board. This is your new home. For now. I promise you, Mr. Chip, I will rehouse you eventually. You'll go to a new customer. But for now, you need to live here. Okay, I'll press and hold there. So there was already some flux on the board, so I didn't really need to mess. And my microscope ring light is not happy at all. So I'm going to have to work with what I've got here. For now, I might end up having to pause this video. It's very, very warm right now. So I'll just work like this for now, I think, because, well... I don't want to cause a fire, so I've just turned it off, it's very, very hot. So I'll just let it cool down while I just run some solder over this. Or rather the soldering iron. Alright, so I'll just turn the ring light back on quickly just to have a look. Yeah, it looks good enough. So, yeah, let's, t let's get some test voltages, shall we? Let's see what's actually going on with this now. So I'll plug this into my bench power supply just for testing. Give me an idea of what's going on. And we do get a boot sequence on this. It is hanging a little bit though, a little bit strange. So let's just see what test voltages we get. So we get five volts, we get 3.3, .3. we get five there, and we appear to have a, th no, we do have a 3.3 .3 volt, it was just a connection issue, okay. We've got five there, we've got two there, we've got 12 there, okay. Now I'm going to attempt to turn this on, see what happens. So I'll connect up the LED and I'll connect up the power button and we'll just see what happens, see if we get a beep. And if we do get a beep on it then I will put it onto a heatsink and give it a test. We do. Okay, we get a beep. Uh, it's on the bench power supply so that's not going to have enough current to, to actually power it on. Uh, so this needs an initial startup of about 30 amps. So I'll hook it up to a heatsink and uh, I'll give it a proper test. So I've got a heatsink here. There we go. Let's just pop on the APU clamp. So I'll get a test power supply and bring my front panel back into play. I'd laugh if it was purely just an encoder issue. Let's plug this in, turn it on. Please don't tell me this is going to boot up and they've ruined it just because of an encoder issue. It's turning on. Is it a lung pulsing blood? It's certainly taking a little while to boot up. And lung pulsing bloods on these are fairly difficult to diagnose. Let's see if it displays anything. I doubt it will. Let's find out together. Very doubtful it's going to display anything here. No, it's not. It's not going to display anything, and it appears to have a lung pulsing blue light of death. So, first thing I always do with the lung pulsing blue light on any console, really, is check it with the thermal camera. See if there's any weird hot spots, or any weird cold spots for that matter. And, okay... We do have one RAM IC there, which doesn't appear to be getting as warm as the rest. So what's the temperature on this one next to it? We've got 50, 50 degrees. And that one is 45. Yeah, so it's not really that much of a difference. Not enough anyway. Uh, the SSD controller is turning on but the SSD chips don't appear to be okay that's a bit strange 
So we should be seeing some heat around this SSD here, and it's not. It's not giving us any heat at all. In fact, that is pretty much always cold, so the SSD is not turning on. It could be a dead SSD, it could be a dead SSD controller. Uh, the SSD controller is a known issue on these. Yeah, that could be a dead SSD controller, so I could change that. Not really seeing anything else. But I would have expected that SSD to be getting warm. Especially by now, the rest of the console is fairly warm. Let's try and... Well, let's knock off the power. And let's try and boot it into safe mode. Let's see if it does actually boot up in safe mode. So I'm going to press and hold the power button. No, that's not going to boot up into safe mode. It's taking too long. So, yeah, that second beep, that's going to shut down. Yeah. Okay. I've got a feeling that this is a bad SSD or a bad SSD controller, to be honest. Uh, just because we, I would expect that to actually get warm. You know, I would expect, same as the RAM, I mean, they run fairly hot, the SSD. My battery's dying in this, but yeah, as you can see here where my fingers are, there's absolutely no thermal signature coming from that at all. I'm going to change the SSD controller because that's the only thing that's really showing a sign of having an issue. For some reason, the viscous paste is missing off it as well. So I'll show you what the SSD controller is and then uh, we'll see if we can change it. I would expect that SSD to be getting warm and it's not getting warm. Those SSD chips, there's a reason there's viscous paste on them and that's because they do run fairly warm. Considering there's no heat sink on them and considering the fact that they're not getting warm at all, that tells me there might be something wrong. It's either that it's not able to initiate the SSD because of another issue, you know, something something preventing them from powering on. Um, it could be the dialogue IC, but that's very unlikely. And the reason for that is because the dialogue IC on the back is getting warm and the SSD controller is getting warm, which means there's power getting to the SSD controller. So we've got a chip just here. This chip here actually powers this chip. And then this chip is the controller for the SSD, which is these three chips and these three chips. So I would say there might be an issue with this chip here. I have had it before where that's caused issues. Granted, when I had it, it was update issues, not, uh, not a blue light of death, but... Yeah, these have had issues in the past. I have known them to have issues, and I have sold quite a few of them on the online store as well. So, you know, off donor boards and stuff. So I'm going to heat this up. I'm going to preheat it first. I've got my hot air set at 440, 40% 40 40 airflow. I'm going to desolder this from the board. This is a guess, but it's an educated guess. The problem with lung pulsing blue light of death is... Until we gain access to uh, system logs, which I can imagine probably isn't too far away from being developed, but until we can gain access to system logs like we can on the PS4, it's going to be very difficult to actually diagnose. And it is pretty much guesswork, because the rest of the board would appear fine. Okay, there we go. So that's the SSD controller removed. And as you can see, there's a lot of solder balls under there. An awful lot of solder balls. So I'm going to need to clean this up. So I'm going to add some leaded solder to this to lower the melting temperature. So leaded solder has a lower melting temperature than lead-free. And when you mix the lead-free solder that's on the board with some fresh leaded solder, it will reduce the temperature and make it easier to clean this area up. So I want to lower the area, the melting temperature because the pads are very fragile I'm going to need to wick the solder off so you just add leaded solder to reduce the risk of damaging the pads and to make it easier to wick okay there we go so very carefully let's just clean that tip off and now we need to wick it away 
So unfortunately, my microscope is out of bounds right now, but I don't really need it for this process anyway. You can see perfectly fine. You know, we don't need a super close-up image. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some wick. I'm going to cut a few pieces because it's going to take a while to wick this away. So cut, cut a few pieces of wick off. And then I'm just going to wick the solder off the board. And it will leave me with some nice clean pad. So I'll use a bit of hot air just to assist me. Makes it a little bit easier. And then I'm just going to clean up this flux. I'll add some fresh flux and then I'll wick it again. Okay, and um, that looks pretty good to me. So I ignore that green stuff on my hand, I'm just going mouldy as I go old. <laughs> as I get old rather. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. So let's just add some flux here. I'll just give that a little mix around. And I'm going to grab a SSD controller. So I've got one here. So this is one that I had pre-boiled ready for my online store. It doesn't matter though, I can re-boil another one. Or if this doesn't fix it, I can re-boil this one. So basically, I sell these on my online store, obviously, because I'm a shill and I'm only grabbing YouTube at, but this is how they come. And uh, that's freshly re-boiled and basically, yeah, it's ready for... Uh, Ready for installation. I'm going to drop that in place. There we go. And let's flow it down. So I know this isn't the ideal an ideal situation, but my ring light has actually packed up now. Uh, <laughs> the joys of trying to get too much light to get more light through to your camera. Okay, I'm going to add some flux now. I do have a microscope ring light on the way, by the way. There we go. Hopefully that went on properly because, well, couldn't really see much, could I? <laughs> Fingers crossed, eh? But I might have to pause the video and carry on when I get a new ring light if that doesn't go, didn't go on properly. I'm not going to worry about cleaning it. Like I said, these are donor boards. Pop this heat sink back on while I'm waiting for, waiting for the board to cool. Okay, let's just pop on the LED and the power button. Didn't go on properly. Damn it! Oh no! Yeah, it didn't go on properly. Well, that sucks. All right, I'm going to have to pause the video until I get a new microscope ring light. Right then, okay, so first of all, sorry for the jump cut here. I had a little bit of an issue and I've had to replace my entire microscope setup. So I've had to replace the camera, I've had to replace the head and the ring light. Literally had to replace everything. So it's been a few days, I couldn't really work on anything at all. The issue with my camera was that it wasn't letting enough lighting. Uh, I did have another camera, but I was waiting for some spaces to come for it. So there's some spaces on the actual camera uh, just under there. And obviously that allows me to get the right focal distance and stuff. But it wasn't letting enough lighting. And because of that, I basically overclocked my ring light. And I forced, forced it to take more voltage and basically that allowed me to get more light to the camera. That kind of didn't go to plan and it blew up the ring light, which I expected, but not so soon. And then I bought a new ring light and I thought, well, hang on a minute. The head still isn't letting enough, enough light through. So I've had a new microscope and that's come today as well. So brand spanking new. I've given my other one away to a user on Discord. 
Uh, one of the perks of being on Discord, you get to enter giveaways and stuff. But I haven't touched this board since, uh, well, since you last saw it, basically. And uh, yeah, it's still got a single beat because the SSD controller didn't go on properly. Something happened during the installation and the SSD controller didn't go down properly, it didn't sit properly on the board. So yeah, I'm going to have to change it again, but I do have one pre-balled. So hopefully we can at least finish this video now. Like I said, it's been a few days, but this board's just been sat waiting for its fate. So let's just show you what's happening quickly. Obviously you've just seen it, but just to show you that it is the same symptom as it was. Come on, you watch it work now. That'd be funny. Okay, it's not even doing that now. Uh, a little bit odd, a little bit strange, unless this power supply don't work. Hmm, let's try this one. This is the one that I was actually using on the video, so let's just, uh, let's just make sure it's not the power supply. I don't know, I've got about 20 of them here, and uh, not a clue which, which ones work. So, as they sell, I have to test them. <laughs> oh well, I swear I'm a professional. I swear I know what I'm doing with these videos. Never mind. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a single beep. And if I plug the LED back in, it won't show anything because the SSD controller didn't sit right. And that causes no power on these things. There you go. As you can see, still a constant beep but no light no nothing so i'm going to get this back apart and i'm going to change that ssd controller again i do have some pre balled so i sold some on the online store uh but i can always reball another one to send out in the morning so it's not too bad this one might end up as a donor anyway so yeah as you can see it's got some flux on it because we've recently changed it. And that is a much better image than it was before. So there we go. Nice new 4K camera. I'm gonna remove this SSD controller. Yeah, that definitely didn't sit properly, did it? Oh well, let's clean this up and I'll get another one installed. Okay, so I'm going to need to do a little bit of patchwork here on this. So you might notice that we've got what look to be damaged traces. Uh, they're not really so much damaged, it's just the conformal coatings come off them. But that's easily solved with a little bit of solder mask. So I'm just going to clean up a little bit. Just a little bit of IPA and a toothbrush, give it a good scrub. Some of these traces, you can see that they're either gold or like a copper colour. Well, they are copper, but... Uh, so, for example, there, 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 uh, there. Uh, so these are all signs that the... Or rather, these are all places that the conformal coatings come off the board. Same as this where it's silver here. That's the same thing that's happened, except the fact that solders run across. And that's what we want to prevent from happening when we, when we put a new chip down on this. So we want to prevent solder from running across the traces. So what we do, we take a little bit of solder mask and we just cover the exposed areas. So this is called UVH900. It's like a paint for PCBs. And we just want to tap a little bit of solder mask on these traces. 
And can you see what I'm doing here? Just covering them up. So anywhere that's exposed, just cover it up and make sure that there's nowhere for that solder to go and then it'll stay where it's meant to stay. So I'll take a UV light and then I'm gonna expose this solder mask to UV light and that'll cure it and make it go nice and hard. That's what she said. So I'll just get rid of this little blob that's off to the left hand side before it sticks to the board. And you can see that's already hardened there as well. It doesn't take long, especially with this UV light. It's pretty powerful. And that's ready for another chip. So I've got one that I re earlier today. I'm going to use that. As you can see, it's... Uh, if I can ever get it in focus, there we go. It's perfect. Beautiful. So that one's one that I've already prepared. Someone actually pointed out to me, I mentioned something the other day on a video. I mentioned a bit of a story time. I mentioned, uh, say, a phrase that, that, well, basically the phrase was, here's one I made earlier. And I always thought it was Art Attack. Uh, Art Attack was a show in the UK when I was a child. I always thought it was Art Attack, but it wasn't. It was Blue Peter. At one point, well, a few people pointed that out. It's pretty funny how I got that wrong. I was trying to show my age and show off, and uh, I got it completely wrong. <laughs> oh, well. So, yeah, in the words of Blue Peter, here's one I made earlier. All right, let's flow that down. Okay, that just moved. Let's add some flux. Make sure it flows fully. Okay, that felt a lot better than it did the other day. Hopefully that's gone on correctly. But that felt like it went down a lot better than it did when I first installed it. To be honest, if this don't work, if he doesn't load up to a white light, I don't know what could be wrong with it because the only sign I can see with this, and I'm going off memory here, but the only thing I can see with this was the fact that the SSD wasn't getting warm, which is obviously abnormal. See, this is why I don't like wearing gloves. Look at what it does to my hands. Oh, wow, it still doesn't turn back on. What the? Hmm. Okay, something else might have happened to this. I'm not sure what. I wonder if it's maybe got some liquid metal on the um, APU. Because that's not normal for that to happen. The SSD controller is replaceable, and for that to happen with two chips, yeah, something else is going on here, isn't it? Right, so did we end up spilling some liquid metal somewhere? Okay, we do have... Well, I've just splattered a little bit there, but that's not an issue. We do have a little bit there, but there's nothing... At least it doesn't appear as though anything seeped under. Hmm, that's very weird. Unless we've had a fuse blow or something else has gone bad since. Alright, let's go... Go into continuity mode on the multimeter. Let's see if we can find any shorts. Hmm, how very odd. I've got missing caps there. Why are the missing caps there? And that could have been knocked off during transport, but... Hmm, unlikely. Very strange. Very strange indeed. Right, I don't really know what else could be causing that now. 
it's uh, slightly strange and a little bit embarrassing on my part because it was turning on and I think I might have made it worse. Well, I mean, how worse can you get than not turning on and or not booting, right? But, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit dumbfounded. I'm just grabbing some probes. So I'm going to pop a black probe there, my red probe there. Okay, we get 190 milliamps. That's a bit strange. And then it sticks at 0 0.007. That's not a normal boot sequence. We do not get a normal boot sequence. Something not right. Let's just try reflowing this, and I'm going to reflow this as well, just in case this chip here has become oxidised during the heat transfer. Let's give that a try, because I've had that happen before on PS4s. I'm going to do it without the microscope, just because it's easier. I can get a, a more direct angle with the heat as well doing that. Right, there we go. Let's try that, shall we? Not yet though, it's too hot. Don't know what else it could be if it's not. Okay, we're getting a normal boot sequence now. I've got around about 440 milliamps. It's supposed to be 300, but the board is still warm, so I'm expecting higher, higher readings than normal. 360, and then back down. So that could be booting now. Okay, front panel's in. Don't need to worry about this uh, heating clamp. Yeah, there you go, so it is turning on now. Yeah, something was wrong with the... Um, either something was wrong with the SSD controller, which I doubt. Uh, the most likely scenario there is that the secondary RAM become corrupted. Uh, sorry, not corrupted. Um, don't know what I'm thinking of there. Uh, the more, more likely scenario is that the secondary RAM oxidised or reflowed uh, partially during the uh, installation of the SSD controller. Uh, that's the most likely scenario. Doesn't appear as though this is booting still. Yep, doesn't appear to be booting still, but it is turning back on. It's back at the same... Uh, scenario that it was before but yeah it doesn't appear to be turning on so we still got no further honestly i don't know what that could be uh the problem is like i said we don't really have any way to really diagnose the things when all we've got to go on is a thermal camera and some voltage readings because the lung pulse in blue light of death can be absolutely anything it's basically a generic error code or a generic error. Uh, so when the console's starting up, I'm not sure if I explained this in the last part of the video, but if I did, I'll, I'll edit one of them out. Um, but the problem with the blue light of death is when, did, when the console starts up, the system goes through a series of checks, and those checks, basically, they check things like the NOR, they check things like the BIOS, they check voltage rails, they check the APU, they check the RAM, the SSD, the Wi-Fi chip, the HDMI encoder, they check everything, basically. Everything that you can possibly get on the console, apart from the stuff that you can unplug, like a, a disk drive, for example, it doesn't check that. Uh, or at least not as far as I know, and it doesn't check it to a point where it will prevent a boot. But if it finds an issue with anything whatsoever, and I mean anything, which could be considered or, you know, uh, construed as a catastrophic failure, so, for example, one of the RAM chips failing, one of the SSD chips failing, the Wi-Fi chip failing, something that could be construed as a, a catastrophic failure, it would basically just stop it. And it keeps trying, and it keeps trying, and it keeps trying, and it keeps trying. But it never gets there, because there's something wrong with that area. And 
it just continuously pulses because it keeps trying. So that's the problem with the lung pulsing blue light of death. And without UART access, which is being worked on as far as I know, but without UART access, we can't really do much with them. Pissing in the wind. That's what I'm doing there. Pissing in the wind. Well, this one's beat me. Well, I mean, it was a donor board, so I'll still make money on it anyway, but either way. Oh well, what a complete a waste of time. Sorry. But never mind. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Unfortunately, this one I don't think I can fix. Uh, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. It's more for fun than anything. Uh, these will never be consoles again anyway. Um, plus, I can make more on them as donor boards anyway. So, it doesn't really matter to me. But, that being said, it's all a learning curve. Every day is a learning day. So, that's going to be for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it, as always. If you do have any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section down below. If you do want to organise a repair, consolefix.co.uk. You can book it in. You can get in touch if you've got a question about a repair as well. Always happy to help. And if I can fix it, then I will. If I can't, then I won't. Uh, if you do want to support me, you can check out my Twitch page. You can become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch. And then subscribing to my Twitch channel, absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything, but it just massively help me out. Also, following is free, so... Give me a follow over there if you want to catch some live streams as well. If you do need any parts and supplies, consolefix.shop. That's my online store. Uh, I do sell parts off consoles. Just today, I've bought another 20 donor boards. I've bought 20 Xbox One X boards. So, plenty of ESD chips to come. Plenty of other parts off uh, Xbox, One S, uh, X, Xbox One X boards to come. Uh, all obviously going to be on the store as well. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time, see you later. Bye for now.